Well, we have some breaking news, or at least I think it's breaking news on the Toyota Tundra engine failure recall. Uh, the first thing is we might actually have some information from a guy that's kind of a high ranking Toyota enthusiast in the Facebook groups on what might be early signs of your engine failing in your Tundra. The second thing is uh, the engine debris issue might actually be more plausible now after I show you these photos from the same guy. He's got his hands on an engine block and took some photos. Really interesting stuff, so let's get into it. So real quick history about who this guy is. His name is Ryan Gregg. Uh, if you go to tundras.com, you'll find all sorts of interesting threads about this guy. He was extremely helpful. I'll just try to sum it up here. He was helpful, helpful for most of the owners that had Tundras. He owns a third gen Tundra himself. It's a 2022. And now he just had a failure in his 2022. And I'll show you that here in a moment, which has made it more interesting because he's kind of resurfaced. So in Tundra land, you'll see a lot of posts like this. What happened to Ryan Gregg? He was a major contributor to this forum and had multiple helpful posts. All his helpful posts are missing. Ryan was sort of instrumental in kind of kicking off the recall, I think. I mean, I, he was part of this uh, spreadsheet initiative on the forums to track these dead Tundras. Uh, he posted the recall notice information. And as you can see here, I believe this is from one of these admins at tundras.com. He says, this is so everyone quits asking. Ryan left because he had Toyota corporate reach out with legal intent to prosecute. Toyota and other manufacturers don't mess around if you are sharing information that you have to purchase a license for. I think that was the copyright information and maybe an NDA involved. The internet is a fun place until it isn't. Isn't that the truth? So now he, do he doesn't really have a platform on tundras.com anymore. He's only in Facebook groups now. Uh, he kind of went away for about a month or so, and now he's resurfaced and talking about his dead Tundra. So let's get into that. So fast forward to July 1st, and Ryan Gregg himself had his Tundra with the main bearing issue, and he has some information about what happened before that failure that might kind of lead some of you Tundra guys to know if maybe yours is on the verge of failure or not. This is very interesting. He posted this on August 1st. That's his truck in the picture there. He says, uh, so it happened, mileage failure, was at 47,931 miles. The build date of the car or the engine was February 17th, 2022, non-hybrid. He was heading north to pick up his nephew to take him to lunch. He was accelerating away from a red light, reached, reached the speed limit and started, and I guess started to lift on the th off the throttle. Dash lit up, not abnormal. It has happened to him before. Pushed the gear selector to neutral and nothing. Blank screen on the digital in instrument cluster odd safe safely pulled over shut the truck off open the driver door shut the driver door go to restart nothing but a click try it again nothing click engine seized with no advanced warning there were warning signs though and this is where it gets interesting he said his average miles per gallon dropped from 17 to 19 miles miles per gallon with a 50 50 mix city and highway to 12 to 13 miles per gallon that is a massive drop current tank was purchased june 26 2024 Exxon 93 octane as always. Uh, boost seemed to be more prevalent with little to no load on the truck. That's that's really interesting as well because when an engine starts to seize up like this, especially in the main bearing, if they're just grinding and getting a lot of generating a lot of heat, uh, that makes a lot of sense that you're going to generate more boost. It's going to be working harder to actually turn the crank and your mileage is going to suffer as a result. So that's the first thing. I think if you see your mileage dipping down, I mean, if you're doing everything the same, you're getting the same gas, uh, driving the same route, driving with the same driving habits, and you see your mileage drop four, five, six miles per gallon, that's probably a good sign that something is going on. And if you're, if you're kind of in tune with your car and you can hear that boost kicking in more often, that might be a sign too that you're, you're on the road to uh, an engine repair. And this is really cool. This is his second post, and this was yesterday. Uh, he said he apologizes for the quality of the image. He's going to get a better scope, but I think the images are fine. It kind of shows uh, what we want to see as far as debris is concerned. And it makes a little more sense. You'll see here in a second about the mileage failures and how random they seem. He says uh, this is a straight straight through to the main oil galley, journal oil supply for those watching on Tundras. He kind of gives the, the thread there uh, of where these images are posted, a little higher resolution if you want to take a look. I'll try to put those in the description as well. So take a look at these. Uh, this is the main oil galley journal supply, and we're going to see a close-up of that here shortly. So it's hard to see here, but you can actually see a little burr, like an aluminum burr there. And, and that's never a good thing. You don't want that in your oil supply. 
and there's a little bit closer picture he's circled there. Uh, you can see that it's just not smooth. It, and this is a car with, remember, it's got over 40,000 miles on it. So that's that's always a, a bad sign. And who knows what it looked like, you know, previously. And then he had another post. He talks about the hanging chads that were not cleaned during the deburring process. The short block was assembled November 18th, 2022. Uh, and his pinky finger, you'll see it in these photos as kind of a, a, a reference for the size of this. So here's a blown up picture. And you can kind of see in this area right here, uh, we'll circle that here in a second, or he circles it on his, okay, you can see some debris there, some of the deburring that didn't occur, and who knows how much was in here. Then you see that line right there. That's all just metal hanging off of this this galley. And there's his finger, his pinky finger for reference. Although he's a big guy, he's like 6'3", 270, so his pinker finger might be a little bit bigger than your average bear. And then there's a really good look at that. Look at that. Look at that galley goes around here and look at how jagged this edge is right there. That is just crazy. That is that is not how it should look. Yeah, that is that is nuts right there. You can see it there too. I mean just just looks just looks bad. It looks like uh very poor very poor manufacturing early on in the process or uh, you know poor quality control. So while I'm not discounting that there aren't other problems, like maybe with the main bearing, uh, people are doing oil now, oil analysis with Blackstone and all these other outfits to try to figure out the high contents of silver that they're finding in their oil changes. Uh, one quick note about Ryan here too. He said he did oil changes at I think 1,000, 3,000, and 5,000. And then he did oil changes every 5,000 miles after that. So He's been super religious with his oil changes, probably better than 99% of people, and it didn't really save him. So let me know what you think in the comments. This actually, for me, this confirms in a way that at least part of this problem is probably to be debris related. If you look at these images, it's very hard to deny that debris could potentially be a problem when you see these uh, burrs and metal flakes and the way they're kind of shaved off there. And it explains really well when we see this wide range of mileage failures some at you know really early mileage in the hundreds or thousands and then some all the way up to 103,000 failure that kind of explains why it's random because if you think about burrs and and metal like this inside these galleys that could easily cause kind of that randomness of the failure so i think it's a good sign if this really is the only issue uh, along with maybe those parts updates that Toyota had in January and March or April. Maybe next year, the year after, we'll start seeing super reliable twin turbo V6s other than uh, all the other problems that they have. Now, moving on, I do have some like fresh, recent dead Tundra posts to show you out of this Facebook group, but I thought this was funny. The owner got the safety recall notice from Toyota and they can't spell interim. I mean, they sent this out. They can't even send out a proper uh, spell-checked interim notice. This guy just got his truck back. I think it took a week. He said it took one week uh, to put the new motor in, which is sort of a bummer. He got a short block. He seems to be happy, but uh, nothing else was replaced on it. It looks like short block, and they re reused turbos and everything else, so might be a repeat failure there. And then there's this poor guy, Carlos. He says, this is my first Tundra and my last 2022 with an engine recall. Check out this video. And in typical fashion, you get these Tundra owners that say, oh no, the only vehicle in the world that ever messes up, say it ain't so, better rush to Facebook to get some attention. Like, come on, dude. Come on, David. Be a gentleman. Carlos had a good response. Well, I have a lot of free time while the tow truck gets here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a perfect response. Good job, Carlos. So I think it's safe to say, hey, it's still my recommendation to stay away from these trucks until we know more. Toyota hasn't include the hy included the hybrids. They haven't included hybrids. They haven't included all of the affected vehicles. And the 2024s are left out so far. Why would you buy this truck at this point? Uh, just wait. Just wait until next year, the year after. Kind of see the trends. Uh, you see them dropping like flies still every day. I actually stopped posting videos about it because I thought people would get sick of it. But once Ryan came back and had some more information, I thought this would be a really interesting video. So that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Till next time.